Hello everyone! I know I've done a few EVE-related videos in a row, but I had one more I was itching to do. In the last video, I made a fully reusable passenger EVE space plane by building a plane that would reach a suborbital trajectory, and then having a tug left in orbit that would drop down from the full orbit, rendezvous with it, and then pull the plane from suborbital to full orbit. The idea in this video is going to be similar. I'm building a single stage EVE space plane that can reach suborbital trajectory. This time we're just going to have one pilot who is then going to get out and then use the EVA pack to reach full orbit. This will remain fully reusable since the EVE plane will be able to land by itself and theoretically be used again to bring some other Kerbal to EVE orbit. So this mission will start with pilot and plane on the surface of EVE and will end with the pilot in orbit and the plane back on the surface of EVE in its original condition with the exception of being empty of fuel. I've made much use of EVA packs in the past to reach a full orbit from a suborbital trajectory, but it occurred to me that I had been leaving a lot of possible efficiency on the table with those. So towards the end of this video, I'm going to be talking more about what I'm doing different here to achieve that better efficiency. To start off with, let's talk about the propulsion that this plane is using. I'm using a combination of conventional chemical rocket engines and electric propeller engines. The propellers will get us to around just under 17 kilometers altitude, and then the rockets will take us the rest of the way to space. All of that will be quite familiar if you've seen the other recent EVE plane designs. What made this different was the need to miniaturize. This whole plane weighs in at exactly 6 tons and 10 kilograms. Obviously this ruled out the choice of either mammoth engines or vector engines because a vector engine would be two-thirds of the mass of this overall plane. So instead I've gone with the Spark engine and I've gone with four of them here. And if you're familiar with the TWR that we've been using on EVE planes, this should seem unusually high. At 15 kilometers and full feel, this will give me a TWR of just under two-thirds. The other EVE planes I've been making recently, I had better success with a initial TWR at this altitude of around one-half. And indeed, I did try this with three Spark engines, and to my surprise, I got worse results. This could be differences in just how I'm piloting it. It could be differences related to how the ISP curve as a function of pressure is different with the Spark engine. But for whatever reason, I got significantly different results and I ended up using four spark engines instead of three as a result. As for the propeller engines, there didn't exist a propeller engine small enough that it was actually ideal for my usage here. As a result, I've ended up using two of the small rotors, both set to only have 15% of the available engine power. In case you're not aware, the rotors in KSP, if you change the available torque in the build screen, it'll change the mass of the part itself. If you set them to zero torque, the small rotors weigh 18 kilograms, and then for every percent of possible torque you add, you add four tenths of a kilogram. The small rotors have a starting mass of 18 kilograms if they're set to provide zero newton meters of torque. And then for every newton meter up to 20 newton meters, you add two kilograms per newton meter. I've set each of the rotors that I'm using to three newton meters, which means they weigh 24 kilograms each for a total of 48 kilograms of electric propeller motor. I mention this because if I were to instead use one electric motor to achieve this total torque of six newton meters, that would only have a mass of 30 kilograms as opposed to this 48 kilogram total. I did build a version of this with just one electric motor. It did fly. In theory, it should have been more efficient, but I had a real tough time actually getting it to do a flight that achieved a better result than the contra-rotating propellers. I think this was because I'm constantly changing the pitch angle of the propellers on the way up, and I think the tiny adjustments must have just been throwing away delta V every time I did them. Perhaps a bit of a mystery there, because 18 kilograms is quite significant, and this really should have outweighed the effects of any issues with stability. But the contra-rotating propellers was working better, so that's what you see in this video. 
I'm reaching near the maximum altitude that I can reach on the propeller engine, so it's about time to fire up the rocket engines, but as I've done in the past, before I do that, I'm going to put the plane into a dive so I can reach a higher velocity before starting the rockets. One interesting thing I noticed is that if you allow the propeller to freely spin around, even if the propeller angles are set to be exactly parallel to the direct route of forward flight, it will generate a ton of drag. An efficient ascent profile on EVE, as with on Kerbin, is all about getting your horizontal speed as fast as possible. With this mission in particular, it's very tricky to balance this against the need to get our arc as high as possible. Eventually, the pilot's going to be jumping out and EVAing the rest of the way to orbit, so he can't do this until we're very near space or else he's going to generate a ton of drag. Kerbals are indeed not that arrow. And he also is going to need to be given some time to fully reach orbital speed before he starts falling back down. Reaching full orbit from suborbital trajectory using a Kerbal's EVA pack is something I've done a lot of times before, and it was in making this video that I realized that I hadn't been that thorough in making this part of the ascent as efficient as possible. EVA to orbit is something I've done in a lot of different missions, not just on EVE. And the way I had done this was to use the spacebar to lock in the heading of the Kerbal, and then to fire the EVA pack prograde. In order to prevent myself from falling back to the planet while this happened, I usually made sure that the previous part of the ascent would give me enough vertical speed that I had time to work with. When necessary, I would use the vertical mode on the EVA pack to give me some additional vertical speed. Let's think about what that's doing. If I'm firing both the vertical EVA thruster and the forward EVA thruster, what that is doing is that's giving me a vector sum of the thrust that's going to be pointed 45 degrees above the horizon. And of course, if I'm just using a forward thruster, I have a thrust that's facing directly forward. Therefore, my ascent on the EVA pack is going to be just alternating combinations of this 45 degree above horizon thrust and this horizontal thrust. These are, of course, not equal in efficiency either. If I'm using the vertical thruster and the forward thruster, that's going to double my fuel consumption, but the vector sum of the thrust is only going to be a factor of the square root of 2 of the original thrust. This means that I only have around 71% of the original ISP, but with the advantage of about 41% more thrust. By using the orbital view, I was able to set my Kerbal's facing to exactly the angle above horizon that I wanted to. The question then is which of these thrusters do I want to use? Thinking of the just using one thruster, the forward thruster, as the baseline, using two thrusters, the forward thruster and the up thruster, will increase my available thrust by a factor of the square root of 2, about a 41% increase. This will decrease my effective ISP also by a factor of the square root of 2 to about 71% of the original effective specific impulse. The last option would be to turn sideways and use a combination of three of the thrusters, perhaps the left thruster, the forward thruster, and the up thruster on the EVA pack. This would correspondingly change my effective specific impulse and effective thrust by a factor of the square root of three giving me about 73% greater thrust than originally at the cost of having only about 58% of the original specific impulse. Further complicating matters, the value of thrust changes throughout the ascent profile. The closer we are to a full orbit, the less important it is to have a high thrust to weight ratio. After some testing, I determined that the way to do this was to use a vector sum of the up and the forward thruster on the EVA pack during the initial phase of the EVA pack ascent before finishing the orbit using just the forward thruster. During most of this ascent, my thrust vector was pointed 30 degrees above horizon, something that I also arrived at through testing. With neither of these choices did I do enough testing where I would feel confident in stating that this was absolutely the way to do this, but I did do enough that I feel confident in saying that this was fairly close to the most efficient ascent profile. 
as we're getting close to a full orbit, we want to zero out our vertical speed. The further our vertical speed is from zero, the more elliptical our resulting orbit will be, and the more delta v we'll actually need to do to reach it. That brings this video to a close. For the next video, expect something quite a bit different. I will be continuing the Odyssey by Bill series. Our fearless Kerbal Nut Bill has been stranded on Lathe for quite some time, and rescue is frankly well overdue.